despite what you read, I'm not anti-solar power, I'm not anti-renewable energy. I think every mechanism of generation deserves a place in our portfolio in this state. I just think that they need to be able to compete as much as possible at market rates or economically driven rates rather than artificial rates created by policy. But assuming we continue to allow more and more people in, that shift becomes more and more substantial. It is not a cost borne by the utilities. They're allowed to recover their costs, and they recover their costs via rates, and those rates are passed on to consumers, and those who do not participate in that metering will be bearing the costs of those who do participate. Senate Bill 309, it originally was a bill to try and do away with net metering as much as possible. And that is uh, on the solar panels that you install on your home, whether it be one or two panels or 96 like I have, you actually generate electricity and you put it back onto the grid. And then the uh, electric company where you're at in the state of Indiana, then uh, when you need it and want it back, they basically give it back to you at wholesale cost. Senate Bill 309 was a bill to do away with that, and that's why I voted against it. 309 has caused a run, literally, for the end of the year. There are so many people that are trying to put systems in and they can't do it. We're doing the best we can to put as many in as we can for people before the end of the year, but it's, it's a tough situation. kids going to school now to learn this technology and if we take the path that Indiana's taking they're going to leave this state because there's not going to be any jobs here. I mean that's just reality. I don't think they realize with the legislation as to how much they're going to affect actual employment in the state. There's a lot more people doing this than you think. So I'm very passionate about the environment. Uh, and I believe that we have a moral responsibility to um, uh, make the earth uh, as good as it possibly can be for our, grand our children and our grandchildren. And one of the ways to do that is through uh, energy, self-sustaining energy. Uh, and solar and wind are the two ways that we can do that without, without having a major impact on our environment. Coal and oil uh, have such a detrimental impact. Uh, and solar does not. My electric bill, and even in the coldest months, have been cut in half. And I'm on total electric, so I don't have any gas. Yeah, so my bill to do the greenhouse and the pole barn and my house was running 600 a month. And so now it's less than 300 a month, those winter months. And in my other months, it's, it's uh, just the maintenance fee of $11.77. As solar becomes more efficient, the panels get cheaper, more people are interested in putting them on the roof because the payback shorter, and the closer people get to becoming self-sufficient. And that doesn't really work with a monopoly utility business model. And so I think they're just in an, I think they know the, the future is changing. Eventually their business model will go away, but they're trying to do everything they can to hang on to it. We talk about wanting to become a high tech Indiana, kind of a, you know, Silicon Valley, the Midwest or whatever, and we tout all the software companies that show up. But the people in those industries who look at Indiana, if they see us as a backward state that's not embracing the future, particularly the energy future, I mean, you think about the tech world, right? These are server farms, there's a lot of high energy stuff going on, and they want access to affordable energy. And because we have clung to the old-fashioned coal plants, the old-fashioned fossil fuel energy, our rates are going through the roof. And so the question for policymakers and for the people of Indiana is do we want to embrace renewable energy, embrace solar power, wind energy, and those kinds of things and, and really bring them into the state or do we want to delay the inevitable transition to the future?